Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Popsicle, a sweet new show where our guests and I lap up what's new in pop culture. My name is RJ from RJ's Food Rocks, and today we have a very special guest. Uh, what can I say about this guest? She loves garlic mayo on her panini. She orders one <laughs> chicken tender <laughs> from the deli. She is the brains, the beauty, and most importantly, the mouth of Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials. It's Allie. Hello, Allie. <laughs> Hi. You know, I was going to I was going to go back. I should go back and look um, for this episode. My Real Housewives intro that we came up oh. with. I said I specialize in anger, but thrive in depression. <laughs> that's actually I you know, I should have I should have told you beforehand that that's the only intro that I'll accept when I guest on other people's podcasts. It's like my writer. It's I won't <laughs> I won't accept any other intro than uh, thrive in depression, specialize in anger. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the podcast. Um, I have voluntold you, you to becoming my official like book guest. So this is also a way to keep me accountable that I'm reading um, <laughs> throughout the year. So perfect. Yeah, we'll do this again in another five episodes. We'll pick a new book. And <sighs> Thank God. It's our own little book club. Just the two of us with the rest of the world <laughs> listening in. Yes. As it should be. Exactly. So on today's episode of The Popsicle, we will be unwrapping this book by Rachel Bloom. I want to be where the normal people are. So let me give you the TCDE to cold to neat. Rachel Bloom has felt abnormal and out of place her whole life. In this exploration of what she thinks makes her different, she comes to realize that a lot of people also feel this way, even people who she otherwise thought were normal. So uh, Rachel Bloom, if you're not aware, she was the co-creator and star and co-songwriter of the hit CW musical sitcom Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And um, I believe all the episodes are on Hulu, Netflix now, right? Net one of those. I, last I checked, it was Netflix, but I don't, it could have changed. It's uh, all episodes are streaming. I I am a big fan of the show. I think you are a fan of the show as well. I met Rachel Bloom. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the accolades. <laughs> so, as everyone knows, I am on a podcast. It's called Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials. It's hugely popular. I'm very widely known for my yes, work. Thousands on of that podcast. Of... I spend a lot of time talking trash about J.K. Rowling and some of the things that she does in the books. But I was when I was thinking today about this book, not not that Rachel Bloom would ever hear this. I mean, maybe she will. Maybe she's a really big fan of Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials. And when she found out, you know, or maybe she really loves R.J. Food Rocks. I Which think is, that, I think, is more likely. There's a lot of, I mean, from the book, I was like, there are a lot of crossing of like, I know, <laughs> between all of us. I know. But I got nervous about saying anything critical about the book because I wouldn't want her to hear me say anything bad about her. J.K. Rowling, I don't care about at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it to her face. Like, yeah. you're the worst. <laughs> I don't care. But I was like, I can't, I... So anyways, I will, you know what? I'm brave enough to speak truth to power. Good, good. So I got I got over it. Okay. And now we're here. Good. I'm glad that you feel relaxed and free as we yeah. um, embark on this discourse on this, on this piece. <laughs> so um, in every episode, we always talk about the sweet and the sticky, just like any good popsicle. We love how sweet they are, but um, hate when it starts to melt and gets a little sticky. So we'll start with the sweet, just some of the things that we loved about the book. I'll go ahead and start that she really starts out this book with this like big statement that like you thought that you were bullied in middle school and you were not. Middle school was awkward. We were all awkward. It was an awkward time. You may have like bad feelings for middle school, but the truth of the matter is you were that was normal. I was like not it was not normal for me. Like I was treated horribly in middle school and I truly was like oh it actually opened my mind of like yeah I wasn't I wasn't like treated terribly there were maybe some instances where p kids would make fun of me but it was not like I was not being put 
as a prank for the whole school to see, unlike Rachel Bloom in this book. It's funny that you're saying that because my egotistical mind, when I read that, I was like, how dare you suggest that you had worse trauma than the rest of us? How how dare you do that? I actually, it took me out the first couple chapters because I was like, no, no way. But it's no. interesting. It's And not to say that like I had it worse because, I, you know, whatever. But it was just, it's interesting to, to hear you say that you liked that. And I will say when she did, she talks a lot about, especially when she got into working with the network sensors, about how she felt super connected with her inner child. And she felt like it was really easy for her to go back to, to that mindset. That I definitely connected with and felt like, yeah, I, I can do that very easily too. I find myself... Going back to, to that mind state and being able to connect with young Allie very well. She takes you through chronologically of like when, you know, from middle school up until um, her success with the show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And yes, that example that you just brought up, I remember when I was reading that, I was like, it's funny that it, it, it full circled for her because she made such a big deal of like, why was I writing such erotic, um, just like crazy just like so like obscene things when I was a child but it, for her it was like it made my job easier when I was actually <laughs> getting paid to do it so mm-hmm. my favorite parts of the book were the parts that were um kind of off the beaten pack of what a normal like collection of essays or memoir would be mm-hmm. so like specific specifically did you did you listen along yes, to the musical part okay I listen to the, there's for the for the readers for the listeners there is a musical element into like halfway through the book where you go to her website you play the clip and you read along that was my favorite part and also my favorite line like just in terms of enjoyment and laughter was the part about um the baseball glove song in dear evan hansen when she said that i laughed so hard i had to pause it because i because <laughs> i was like i was laughing so do you when you're so i live alone um and and therefore typically reading alone do you find when you're reading alone do you laugh out loud if yeah. things are funny okay yeah okay mm-hmm. it's because she writes it in she it's in her voice it's so right. in her voice that i'm actually hearing when i'm mm-hmm. reading it i can hear what it sounds like and i think that makes it funnier and i i remember when she was being interviewed when she was doing like her her book tour virtual book tour someone brought up the idea that she should turn it into a one woman show and she was like i had never thought of that but that sounds like a great idea and i after reading it i was like yes this could easily play out in like a a, a full a carrie theater. fisher yeah Mm -hmm. wishful drinking yeah absolutely she could do it easy um i'm shocked that your favorite uh part of the book was not the harry potter fan fiction (laughs) i did love that too i did really love that too um and i did like that she left that that caveat um at the very top of the chapter about how it's a very confusing and complicated time to be a harry potter fan and that was something that i think that um Adam and Ari and I on the podcast we kind of go through every episode Mm -hmm. where it's like this is such a big part of our childhood and now it's become this weird multifaceted thing of like this we love this but it's it's tainted now so yeah the chapter sounded literally like a conversation that you would have in the podcast the entire time I was like I feel like they've already (laughs) talked about like where is the drama (laughs) club I mean you've mentioned it that Draco if Draco was in like the drama club I think he would have not been as crazy and no (laughs) mean he would have he would have been the lead in every show he would have been curly (laughs) he he would have been curly he would have been Harold Hill he would have been a great Harold Hill (laughs) And I also enjoyed uh, that it was Professor Sinistra, the mm-hmm. astronomy professor, because that's my favorite professor name. So yeah. I enjoyed that little Easter, Easter egg. It's not really an Easter egg, but I, I enjoyed like the, it. I like the thing at the end where she was, the, she was, they couldn't get a ticket to Hamilton and she was the <laughs> ticket. So she was box office. And it was like, <laughs> this was their way of getting back to me all this time. Yes. Yes. And that's like the typical like Rachel Bloom comedy that I like 
that's one of my favorite things about Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Like, there's there's always something that gets there's a little like button. The button is always either a non sequitur or just like just something so crazy and left field that you're like, oh my god, this just like seals the deal. <laughs> mm-hmm. A big uh, theme that she talks about in the book and really played out is this idea of like, obsessive compulsive. And she, you know, she doesn't even know how to name it. Like, she calls it OCD at one point, but she's like, it's you know, not a lot of the therapists that I see actually say that it's OCD, so she talks about it as the bad or Jafar. <laughs> and what I loved about the show was that when she, when that character gets into her crazy obsessiveness of, like, making sure every part of her, like, crazy plan is, like, figured out, it is kind of, like, weirdly cathartic to see someone actually play out the crazy thoughts that, like, you would think. She finds the one person that tweeted her that she's not funny. So she's like, I have to tell everyone in production that I had a seizure. And they, yeah. and then, like, they have to cancel, like, production because of my cancer-induced seizure. Mm-hmm. Like, but that's all just a hoax just so she can, like, find this person that, that tweeted her. I love any conversation about mental health that doesn't, I mean, number, I could just full stop there. I love any conversation about mental health. Um, But I love any conversation that like doesn't try to put a ribbon on it, that doesn't try to be like, but I made it through and so can you. You know, it's one of those things where I think a couple of times she talks about where it's like, it just kind of went away and there wasn't really any you can't point to any solution, but it just kind of went away and then it came back again. And there's no real way to to say this is what caused it or this is what ended it. And I think that's something that's that's very true um, to to experiences in in real life and what real people go through. And I I had a feeling the entire time I was reading, it, I was like, oh, my God, I wonder how Ali is reading this. <laughs> right yeah, now. she I mean, that's the thing. I, like you just said, she really does get kind of like descriptive and graphic when she gets into those bad places and like oh I like we know this too well but it is it is so refreshing to like kind of like see it play out the things that she was describing about her as a child were patterns that I actually played out as a child um and so seeing that reflected um in a in a book from a person that's like real and exists in the, you know, it was just, it was very, um, cathartic isn't the right word, yeah. but it, it was just very validating. Yeah. We like her. We like her work. We think she's talented and funny. So it is, yeah, that validation of like, oh, like you can turn all of that, that like, I think like when, Especially, I mean, even me too, like when I was growing up, I could, I never thought that that would actually like manifest. I would just kind of like, she talks about the whole show pony thing where it's just like, I just have to keep going, like just kind of like keep pushing through um, and like push everything down and just keep going through. But it's like, no, it's actually all of that that kind of like is making you who you are today, which is normal, which is all she wants. (laughs) But mm-hmm. she's been normal all along. One of the things that I keep coming back to that's funny to me that I, I wish that she would have mentioned or I don't know. And maybe she didn't have this realization. But it was funny to me that this whole thing was like about this quest of hers to be normal. But in as she's pursuing what she loves, she's pursuing a lifestyle that is as far away from normal as you can be (laughs) like to become a famous person and a celebrity like that is so far removed from normal and that for her to to have pursued you know have have felt this yearning to be like on the other side to be considered normal but for her to do what she loves that success in that realm would mean not being normal there's just always that block like, you know, like, and that's, I mean, that's, that's mental health for you. It's like, you never can get past like beating yourself up first because it's always like the easiest thing to do. And like, it's almost like comforting, like, no, like I'm not normal. And it's like, no, like the whole situation, big picture, this is not normal. I am put in not normal situations. Like, and so I think like it did, it did kind of make me feel like, oh, wow, maybe I can write a book. Cause it did feel like so like personable and like Mm -hmm. oh this is kind of how I process my thoughts too like 
Mm -hmm. I did like that the the book is not set up like a typical book. There's all these different things. There's lists, there's resumes, there's musical numbers and maps. Like Yeah, there's a th there's a theme park map and and pitch. Oh my god, I laughed so hard <laughs> for that theme park. And that's what I I just I love it did not feel like reading to me. And I like that was kind of like my big takeaway after the whole book is like I didn't feel like I read it. I felt like I watched a show. I, mm -hmm. I felt like I was visualizing the entire time. Good job, Rachel. We <laughs> applaud you, Rachel. So just like popsicles, when it gets a little hot outside, it starts to get a little sticky. So let's talk about the sticky. I am such a big fan of her. I know her <laughs> as well. So I will say that like, if you are not familiar with Rachel's voice, I think it would be hard to kind of like not experience this book the same way that we did. I, I totally agree. And I think um, what I kept hitting against was feeling like it could have been um, structured in a different way. I felt like um, she did. It wasn't perfectly linear, but it mm -hmm. did kind of follow the trajectory of being a child, going to high school, going to college, professional career. And I kind of felt like it could have been reworked in a way to be like, this is who I am and this is the success I found. And then going back to the childhood stuff. Because I was like, when I was reading some of the stuff, I was like, I feel like it would be kind of weird not knowing her and the specific type of truth that she yeah. speaks, that it would be kind of difficult to to jump into that world without knowing her. I mean, I'll just say it. you're either a poop person or you're not a poop person. You're either a like a body fluids person or not. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the poll that Adam did the one time we were on Zoom, it was like you're a poop person or a sex person or you have no sense of humor. It was one of those. Three. Yeah, you, it's either one or the other. And I, I would like to say that I have appreciation for both, but it did. I was like, oh, another poop thing. Oh, it's like oh, another another fluid thing. So it really is just like, oh, you're either that or you're, you're sex jokes. And I think she's, you know, she's kind of both too. So mm -hmm. she can, she can go either way. I don't want to be that person like, this was a crude book and I don't think kids <laughs> should read this and blah, blah, blah. You know, watch like one season of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend or like watch, you know, even watch like her, like her like old YouTube videos. So like that Ray watch Bradbury song. Oh yeah. I was going to say it, but then I realized I can't swear. That Ray Bradbury song. <laughs> Watch Sex Me Ray Bradbury. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I, it's like that and um, her like Hanukkah Honey song. I feel like those mm -hmm. are two really good representations of like, this is a girl who is like, and, and I actually really, I know it's the sticky part, but I did, I love that part where she was like, every time I had to like pretend to be sexy for a bit, I always put in like a boner killer to be like, mm -hmm. I'm making fun of this because like, she was seeing people on YouTube like, oh, she's hot. And she's like, no, stop. <laughs> I felt like that to me, her conversation about that was very reminiscent of Gaga. Oh. How, yeah, how yeah. Gaga has been like, you know, if you want me to take off my clothes and be on stage, like I'll do it, but I'm also going to cover myself in blood and, blood you know, and do meat. it, yeah. <laughs> do it my way, you know? Exactly. So yeah. I think I, I always find that to be a very empowering way to look at it yeah and i guess like just the overall like we talked about the convention of the book the structure of the book i kind of put it in the middle like i think some people would be into it some people might think if like th for me the times where it felt like i was like oh was when moments kind of like was just over and i think that's kind of like the point of it because that's also her sense of humor it's like you catch it and then you go you're on to the next one um but there were a lot of like stories that I wanted to kind of like live in a little bit more before it was over. Um, but also it made the whole reading experience like really palatable. And I was like, oh, and I'm done with reading. So, <laughs> yeah, that was nice. I think for me, my biggest thing and like I hate to say it because there's so much other that she has to offer. But I wish that there had been more about her time working on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend yeah. and and the experience with that. And, you know, there's bits and pieces of that. And and I know she says at one point, she's like, you know, it, it would have to be an entirely an different entire book. book. Time, yeah. um, but I, I did kind of feel a little disappointed um, mm -hmm. that there wasn't more about yeah. about that. But just because we're stands. <laughs> yeah. Well, and RJ, 
You know the trope. <laughs> His storytelling is a norm. When a person's in trouble. A man of a station. A distant <laughs> To wrap up this riveting conversation <laughs> of just us fangirling for Rachel Bloom, I would say that like fans of Rachel from Crazy Ex Girlfriend will love this book as like a look into almost like what they thought about Rachel from the show and like be validated like, oh yes, like these a real person did do these things in some form of another, and I can see like how that shaped to who she was because I mean if we're just talking about the show too like the show did a really great job of kind of like mapping out this character for us and seeing her in literally the lowest of lows and high and then ending in like a medium because that's kind of like the point it's like you know sometimes days are bad sometimes days are good but you just kind of have to like find what you love and just keep doing it um and I you know really deducing from the book that being normal doesn't look normal I thought that was very clever <laughs> when I wrote that. It was just really good, and I'm really glad that she is sharing all of the parts of herself. Yeah, me too. I think it's also just, like, I also really love the afterword. Like, I think it kind of, like, brought everything together because she did release this book during COVID. Um, Coke songwriter from the show like had died a day after she had given birth like it was just like all these crazy things that happened that I felt like really tied the knot at the end of like my look for normalcy is completely different now now knowing that like it's never gonna you know like normal is like just so I don't know subjective now like it, and it's, it's constantly just, evolving in unprecedented times in these unprecedented times at every episode i kind of uh link it back to my love for food and create a recipe based on this book and i was having a really hard time trying to figure out what recipe i could create based off of my experience reading this book and then when we got to the portion of the book called Original Narrative Fun Times Thrill World, where she literally, <laughs> cre like we said earlier, a pitch for an, an amusement park, I was like, great, she'll surely write something about food here, then I can just do that. And she did. So my recipe will be inspired by Mama Gruna's Shtetl Dinner and Show. Where, <laughs> and I'm just going to read the excerpt because it's just yeah. so good. Step back into a poor home in a Jewish shtetl in the 1800s for delicious home-cooked potatoes, onion soup, potatoes, ground fish, stale bread, and potatoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Served buffet style in that each dish must be reluctantly taken from the hands of one of Mama Gruna's many children. And beware of the Cossacks hiding under each table, vegan options available. <laughs> so I think I'm going to take Mama Grinna's um, menu and make some sort of like potato potato <laughs> pancake like a like an old timey potato pancake with like ground fish in it and see how that goes. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for another episode of The Popsicle. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment below on what you thought about I Want to Be Where the Normal People Are. If you're listening to us on the podcast, make sure you are leaving us a rating or a review. Tell me what you think of the show and what you'd like to hear more in the future. Five stars <laughs> only. Thank you. Thank you. So the book that I'm thinking of, it's called A Pho Love Story. It's by a Vietnamese writer. It's her like debut novel, but it's a romantic comedy. Well, you know how I feel about food. You don't like famously, you don't like food. <laughs> oh my but God. But I would be happy, I, I would be delighted to read that book and to discuss it with you. Great. I will be linking a bookshop's uh, link on this episode so you can purchase the book from a local bookseller. You can find our guest Allie on the Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials podcast. You can find them on all of your podcast platforms and on HP Anxious on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me, RJ, as RJ Food Rocks on all of your social media. And my YouTube channel, RJ Food Rocks, premieres a new video every week. The Popsicle is part of the Ampliverse. You can find all of our shows on theampliverse.com. 
Allie, thank you so much for joining me and for um, being a willing participant in my two-person book club. <laughs> it was the greatest delight. <laughs> Anytime you ask me to do anything, my response is always, I would love nothing more in the world. So It's very nice. It's very nice to know that I have that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. This has been The Popsicle. Bye.